A public inquiry into the contaminated blood scandal of the 1970s and 80s has started work today as its full-time chairman took up his post. Three and a half thousand people were infected with HIV and hepatitis C when they were given contaminated blood as part of their treatment for haemophilia. Our health correspondent Paul Kelso has been meeting some of the families that were affected. If you're going to pull together even 20 or 30 lots of blood from different people, and particularly if, if as they did, you take it from high-risk groups like prisoners, drug addicts, prostitutes, street people, um, you are going to end up with problems. Sue Threckle has lived with the consequences of contaminated blood for nearly 30 years. Her husband Bob, a haemophiliac, was infected with HIV by a blood clotting agent and died in 1991. It wasn't our fault. We'd done nothing wrong and that we'd been completely let down by um, whoever was responsible for making those decisions that led us to this place. And my feelings have never changed over that. It was a very dark place because Bob himself in particular was so frightened and so worried about what would happen to us, you know, because he knew that he wasn't going to live. More than 2,400 people, mainly haemophiliacs, have died after being infected with HIV and hepatitis C by contaminated blood products in the 1970s and 80s. At a demonstration in central London, campaigners called for pharmaceutical companies that made the drugs to be held responsible. From what I've seen, there was negligence both with the companies and the government, in my opinion. And I think it would be right that uh, where compensation is due, that it should not just be from the government, it should come from these corporations as well. Especially when you take into account that these corporations have made hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. Drugs companies and governments in France, Japan, the United States and Canada have been held to account. But that has never happened here. Campaigners, victims and families of the thousands of people affected by the contaminated blood scandal are hoping that their 30-year wait for answers will finally come to an end with a public inquiry due to start work later this year. Nine months after Theresa May announced the inquiry, Chairman Sir Brian Langstaff starts work today. In that time, another 70 people have died. I hope that if they're not willing to come forward, companies will be compelled by the legal powers that the judge has in this public inquiry to make sure that all the documents are produced and witnesses have to come before him and explain and answer the questions that the judge may have. The inquiry is expected to announce its terms of reference soon. Its first hearings cannot come soon enough for the victims. Paul Kelso, Sky News.